Hi everyone, welcome back to LED Life. Today we're going to be talking about advertisement. Does it really affect you? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Light exposing darkness. Welcome back everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And before we dive in into our topic, I want to thank our Patreon support. Without your support, we won't be here today. That's right. And for you that haven't joined our Patreon family, join us. <laughs> and also those and in Patreon can get another perk such as the Po Show. Before we dive into our topic, I'm going to give you some ad here. We have t-shirt. If you go to our store, teespring.com slash lightwear, you can get our t-shirt and your purchase really help our ministries. She designs a lot of those t-shirts. Yeah. Cool designs. And remember, advertising works. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one brought to you by this documentary called Sudology. If you guys haven't watched it, you can get it digitally or DVDs in our stores. So before we begin, I'm going to show you this clip. Cool. What Amazing. do you guys think about that? <laughs> it makes me want to make our intro look like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was some a clever camera work right there. So, Creative. so a few questions. What do you guys feel about this ad and what do you think they're trying to market? You know, I'm going to be ad? honest, I was kind of distracted by the message because I was just looking at how cool it was shot, but right. it's talking about thinking different and stuff, right? But I think, I think that's kind of the message is that you, you actually have a different vantage point. So what they're showing you when it actually shows you what it's really made out of isn't really all what it is. Right. So it's like depending on how you're viewing that or what through what lens you're looking at that changes. Mm. Because if you move to a different vantage point, you can see that those elements are not the same. Yeah. Mm. And it's very like inspirational because it has all right. the aspects, a good message, has the wow factor, it has right. the music. Yeah, the music everything. gets you like, you know, mm. whoa, yeah. this is cinematically cool. <laughs> yeah. What what ad do you think it is? Oh. Like oh, which company? Man. Yeah. 
Mm. Can you guys think? <laughs> uh, it looks very clean. They're selling yeah. toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. That's that's much needed right yeah. now. <laughs> right? I have no idea. Electronic yeah. company. Yep. Yeah. This is actually really? an Apple app. Apple. That's really? I was, uh, I was, I was wondering because they're big on the think different yeah. Right. Yeah. slogan. Right. Yeah. This is actually an Apple ad. Do you hmm. guys see like how this company trying to get us to make feel positive, mm -hmm. like make us feel good about their product? Yeah. And they actually have this description in the ad. It says, here's to hope to those who have always seen things differently mm. and then with the link to their website yeah you know it's interesting that, that the words choices that came up to describe this i mean i, I didn't know i have, have not seen this ad before i thought it was a different ad when you first started but it was like i immediately went that's so creative mm -hmm. but that's how apple brands themselves is like look at the creativity mm. you can make with this machine right and yeah. it's also like very futuristic looking and very right. clean, clean. It's, yeah mm -hmm. it's all branded mm. right and just a little fact like iphone actually rises to 72.9 million units sold in wow. the fourth quarter of wow. 2019. And you think That's each phone is like 1,500 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's it's interesting. And it's comparing to Samsung, which only, you know, 70 million. Mm. And what that I read that, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, Samsung is cheaper and they have That's more like features. <laughs> more features. <laughs> some, some of Samsung has more features and we wonder why iPhone still right. sells more. Right. right. Because right. they got good advertising, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's see. So and I think that we've also attached it to something more than just use. Right. Now it's just like a look. Yeah. Like if you want to look that's business and classy, you got to have this clean white phone. Or, you know. Right, right. I yeah. think it's lifestyle. They show mm. how it integrates into your whole life. You're like, oh, yeah, I need that for my life. Right. Yeah, right. right. So the first ad actually started with just a 10 second ad. It's just this watch, it's called Bulova Watches in 1941. Mm. And do you know how much they paid for the ad? Mm. 10 cents. No. <laughs> <laughs> 150 bucks. No. Yeah. They paid only $4 to $9 for <gasps> wow. wow. this ad in 1941. Now you said it was, uh, it's like a motion ad? Is it a video? Is it, yeah. Like something that was on TV. Yeah, because yeah. the TV was, was the getting its, stuff, yeah. yeah. Well, but the TV was really getting its steam in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then in the 1960s, it's all changed oh, yeah. because of the Super Bowl. Oh, wow. Mm. The Super Bowl came, and guess how much the ad cost? In for a Super Bowl? During the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Oh, Millions. Boy. Yeesh. Hundreds probably of thousands. tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. It's, yeah, it's 37, 500,000. Yeah, and then you have a same company doing an ad over and over and over throughout the night. Mm. Man, that's yeah. a lot of money. Wow. <laughs> and mm. that was in 1960s. Yeah, and that was probably a lot of money to them back then. Right, mm. and you know, today the Super Bowl ad is 5.6 million for oh. 30 seconds right. slot. Yeah. Right. 5.6 million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, it's yeah. like a hundred and, wow. I don't know. You, I don't know if this is the new figure of the old, but it's something like $186,000 a second or something like that. Ridiculous. I mean, more money than you make in a year. Right. <laughs> it all centers around emotion, though. I mean, that's why an ad during the Super Bowl is more, um, you know, expensive than an ad at any other time. Uh -huh. Even though you can have something else where people are like watching, as many people are watching like the Super Bowl, it's still, it's like they know that if they play the ad when people are in this heightened state of emotion, that it's easier to sell a product to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I get like, to that. Actually, <laughs> something I learned from Suitology yeah. on the store it says that, you know, when you're watching a show, they get you to this heightened state of whatever, and then it's like, boom, commercial break. And you're like, ah. Yeah. But now you're at that state when you're seeing all these commercials. Right. So yeah. it's all purposely done. So let's see the first car commercial here. Nice. <laughs> Horse and buggy. It was on the $1,000 car. Then the speed is only 20 miles, the maximum speed. Hmm. Interesting. What car was it? It's called the Winton Motor Carriage. Oh. It's like a, yeah, a horse so carriage or is it actually a car? I actually got a motor carriage. Not actually so it has sure, to be yeah. a car. Yeah. Did you know that the wheel width of a car is actually the same wheel width as a horse and buggy? And the reason mm -hmm. they did that is because when, think about when roads first were designed, 
They didn't have cars with that can drive all over. They had horses and buggies. So the cars had to go on the same road, which they had to place the wheels in the same distance apart to uh, actually do that. Yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's interesting. And if we pay attention to this ad, you can see that they only describe the, the fact and features of the car. You know, it's the best vehicle of its kind. It is handsomely, strongly, and yet lightly constructed, elegantly finished. You know, all these facts. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's see what's happened today. It says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nothing about the car. Right. And if you think of most car commercials today, they show you the lifestyle of the car. Right. Yeah. They're usually traveling to the nightclub or yeah. they're, you know, mm -hmm. if it's like a Kia or something, you know, it's like all the friends going to a rave, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's like really it has nothing to do with the car. I, I remember when, I think it was Kia or it was like um, one of those little cube cars or whatever. And they played some sort of like clubby type of music and, and it just blew the band out of the water. Like the band just all of a sudden got famous oh, wow. and they sold out of the car. And it was wow. just because of the way that they portrayed these kids going to a rave. It was, it was really interesting. Yeah, that made me think of the commercial with the hamsters in the right. car. I mean, right. like, right. they really don't tell you anything about the car. Right. Just, yeah. yeah, this car just say, now is the best time to buy a Volvo before Proposed costs on luxury car increase. Interesting on the, the your luxury sedans, you know, they, they usually play like the classical music and yeah. stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> All sophisticated. Yeah, mm -hmm. refined person. To make people feel classy. Or even on like a, a van, a minivan is full of kids and a family, it's just like action movie, like action film music mm -hmm. going crazy. I, I remember you showing a clip of Jaguar. You remember that commercial? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The car commercial was like all like, they were asking the question, why is it that in Hollywood movies, the it's always played by the Brits, the villains, <laughs> yeah. right? Nah. And then it was like, they, they were always rich and sophisticated. And then they were like, we drive Jaguars. That's why it's it was kind of a, interesting. It was a whole campaign. They did several ads. They built a website, the whole thing. and. Their, their whole slogan for the whole campaign was, it's good to be bad. Oh, oh wow. wow. And it was all very James Bond-esque, you know, um, really exciting. But appealing to the wealthy right. and that type of personality, rather than like, you know, this car will drive this X distance and... You Not know, how long it'll last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they don't care right. about that. Okay, so yeah, today, because there is a lot of car brand out there. So they're they're shifting their focus instead of telling you what they're selling. They're telling you why they're selling it and why you should have it. Mm. This other one, Coca-Cola, they are famous with their saying half a Coke with a smile. Yeah. They didn't right. say you the facts about the Coca-Cola. What <laughs> right. does it have in it? Right. Yeah. I don't think they should do that actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It will keep you awake for this long. You know, that, yeah, it's, it's interesting when you look at uh, modern ads, they don't tell you anything about the function of the product. Right. It's like the lifestyle. Right, Coke, yeah. Which now without the cocaine. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just imagine if they tell you what's in it. Yeah. It's fascinating. You think about cigarettes, you know, they come with a warning on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if every product you bought came with a warning of long-term implications? Uh, <laughs> right. This drink will cause obesity and... <laughs> right. Nobody will buy them. But it doesn't affect me, right? Yeah, right. It doesn't affect me. Right. I think the most powerful argument for the, the, the media, because um, this is something that, that our ministry discusses a lot, and if you kind of discuss, well, how am I really affected by what movie I'm watching? Like, you know, I'm a Christian, I go to church, I read my Bible, so I know the truth. There's probably not a movie that's gonna tell me to, you know, renounce my God and, and, right. and this and that. But the proof is actually, you know, in the pudding that they can prove monetarily how much you're affected by. They spend millions of dollars trying to affect people. They wouldn't spend the money if it didn't work, right? Right, yeah. That so it comes dumb. to the next question then if it doesn't affect us, why they spend money on ads? Yeah. Exactly. Right. I'm right. pretty sure it's not just to market their product. They're maybe trying to send us a message, mm -hmm. change the culture and society. Tax deductions. We don't know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a really interesting documentary. Um, in fact, I think you guys should watch it if you haven't watched it. It's called Art and Copy. Have you heard of this documentary? Mm -hmm. I've heard of it. So they took all the major slogans like Nike, just do it. Do you know where Nike, just do it came from? Not at all. I I was just reading about this. The it's other actually day. pretty crazy. They they uh, what's his name? Phil Knight. 
he hired a graphic designer to come up with that and this i mean they paid i mean he paid him some like or she like nine dollars or <laughs> yeah, something yeah, for yeah. It. Yeah. it's 45 dollars nine dollars something like that and they whipped out that you know nike swoosh so the slogan just do it um whoever was a part of that company was watching something on um i think it was either tv or something where they had a firing squad and the guy that was gonna get shot, Ooh. he literally goes, just do it like this. And the guy was like, I'm gonna call the company that or whatever like that. Oh. And that's how the slogan got attached Wait, to Nike. Real, yeah. This was a real event. It's a real event. Like someone was really getting shot and, and the guy was just like, just do it. You know, like, wow. like do it already. And wow. then that stuff that was the inspiration. Inspiration yeah. comes in strange but, <laughs> Yeah, right? But this art and copy was pretty fascinating because it went through all the ones like Got Milk, you know, all uh, the Where's the Beef, mm -hmm. you know, you, do you, have you heard of I've that heard slogan? That. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, those are like government ads. Those aren't even a brand. Well, <laughs> think about how weird that is. You're watching TV and all of a sudden the government says, beef is what's for dinner. Like, got um, milk and it's right. not even produ It's not even promoting a, a right. company. It's just the government telling them, this is what you need. <laughs> right. right. And, and so, you know, these things have influenced culture. And that's what was getting at the, the, the kind of art and copy um, documentary was getting at was really like all of these things has actually influenced and that Nike just do it inspired a whole generation to just get out there and exercise. I mean, it actually had a had a profound effect on the population. Wow. Yeah. So the next one, I'm actually going to show you that just do it. Oh, wow. uh, uh. Baby Daniel is just waking up. He's going to win a state championship one day. This guy, he'll run a marathon. Oh, well, you, man. Me? She is going to have the best swing in the state. Who, me? Yep, that's right. She will totally win the city open tournament. Get out. Oh, my God, you get out. <laughs> all of these athletes are terrible now, but they'll all do big things one day. But this is where everyone reaches their athletic peak. Go, Barry! Get up! I'm winning! Be cool, Barry. Be cool. One year ago, I said she would score every time she had the ball. And guess what? Now I score every time I get the ball. <laughs> I know. When everyone pushes their limits, they reach their maximum potential and they live happily oh. ever after. I'm not done. Hey, no, you're done. Hey. That's a wrap. Oh, come on. That was my tagline. Hey, story's over. What are you doing? Oh, whoa, he is going to kill you. And your mother's going to kill me. I'm going to kill you. So sorry, man. What are you, what are you doing? You said I could do amazing things. Well, I didn't mean jump off a freaking cliff. I've never lost. Kid, you can't out-sprint a sprinter. You can't either. Ah! Zach, what are you doing on top of that van? Aaron, what are you guys doing? Watch this. Oh. What? I can't take it. Neymar, whoa! That is humiliating on so many levels. Ooh. Giancarlo! Serena, what kind of training is that? Excuse me? So sorry. Nigel! That is so unnecessary. Whoa, Tim, Tim, you can't be the star of every sport. Yes, he can. Come on! Let's do this. No, no, let's not do this. Run! Everybody is going way too far! Hello? Why is no one listening to me? You too, Mo! Stop! The race is over, man! Oh, kid, no, 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 kid, please, please don't do this. I got this. This is out of control. That's brilliant. That's a really cool wow. ad, right? And you know, actually, when they after they make that tagline, just do it, their sale increased to eight hundred million dollars. Wow! And in a decade, it becomes two million dollars. Wow! That's, insane. That's wow. really powerful. I mean, when you watch an ad like that, just with the music and you see all these amazing things, it just makes me want to like go out and like yeah, do really something does, cool. Like, you know what I mean? Heart rate increases. Mm. All yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Really cool. So see, it really it doesn't affect us, right? No. <laughs> no. I have to chain trade my Adidas out. Let's see, this one is the Apple first ever commercial. First one. Not 1984. first ever. Is it yeah. in 1984? 1984. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their first commercial. They don't even 
say in this commercial you know what they're selling or oh, really? the the features of their product hmm. you'll see today we celebrate the first glorious anniversary of the information purification Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Wow. Wait, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we're so the company was originally called Macintosh? Macintosh. Yeah. But I thought it was I thought it was Macintosh and then it went to Apple. It did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I miss I misheard that then. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, in this uh, commercial, they're actually trying to inspire people that they can be free from the big brother, mm. presumably IBM. And right now, oh, they actually paid like more than $600,000 for this ad <laughs> to be aired in the Super Bowl. Wow. That wow. Year. So and that's that not even counting production costs, huh? No. Right. <laughs> right. No, this is just paying for the ad. Wow. But right now, they are worth more than one trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. So those six hundred thousand dollars really worth it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> what is it? You gotta yeah, mm -hmm. spend money to make money. That's right. Yeah. right. You know, I just saw on the news that um, um, Jobs' wife that was mm -hmm. left with all that money. I think it was equivalent to twenty-four billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That she has made it her life mission that she will not pass that money to her kids. It is her sole job to give away all that money. Uh, and then wow. she said Steve Jobs actually wanted it that way. And she was like, I'm not interested in building financial legacies for my children. They got to start over. Wow. I thought that was kind of cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. 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 Interesting. <laughs> yeah. It is interesting. Tough love. <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you imagine if your kid, no, mom, please, don't get <laughs> out $24 billion. Yeah. They just have one? Yeah, I was going to say, you <laughs> could still work. Take I mean, care of college or something. Yeah, if they gave you that money, you yeah. could make investments and things like that. I'm sure that. they're going to do that, but she's got her fingers in tons of foundations, and wow. hopefully maybe someday she'll support Little Light. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Call her. To give away. Yeah. We use Apple, Mrs. Jobs. That's right. <laughs> so the first why advertisers are willing to pay a lot of money because you can use advertisement as a meaning to empowering and accepting, accepting groups that are less relatable or less acceptable. Mm -hmm. Like for example, in the first Cheerios ad, some times ago, I forget exactly when, they made this ad with uh, intra-racial couples in their ad. The ad is pretty simple. They didn't say anything racial or something, mm. but they, many people, you know, they didn't agree with that ad and they, commented on Cheerios YouTube page, like some racist comment, like Cheerios had to uh, disable comment because of wow. that. Wow. I mean, that reminds me of like when Bolts, the runner, mm -hmm. remember they were saying like mm -hmm. he's from Jamaica mm -hmm. and uh, you know, in Jamaica, it's like the whole homosexuality thing is like sort of frowned upon in that mm -hmm. country. And mm -hmm. so they, they put him in a commercial in a dress yeah. and it was to break down the cultural, uh, you know, um, understanding right. of and interestingly, even though they received some backlash, their brand exposure went up 77%. Yeah, controversy. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> even if it's negative, like they yeah. still pass it around. I think some people purposely try to be racy in that, you know, and push Which the cultural norm. Also in right. studiology. Right. Remember that guy, he was like, uh, he made that movie and he put these like real controversial billboards up and then he would go and like spray paint on like you know, something against the movie mm -hmm. and it made the news and everything like wow this is so controversial yeah. that he was people playing are speaking both out. sides yeah it's wow. like and it made his movie just blow up because people are like mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna go see this movie you know it's mm -hmm. so controversial all yeah. right and here mom 
Yes, honey? Thou told me that Cheerios is good for your heart. Is that true? Says here that Cheerios has whole grain oats that can help remove some cholesterol, and that's heart healthy. Beautiful. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, it's really simple. There's nothing racist about it, right? Yeah, no, it no. was just at that time, it was not in the norm. It was mm. kind of edgy, controversial for Right. Time. But mm. since then, you know, more company put interracial family in their act. Right. So, what you're saying is if they put something out on television or in the media and you see it over and over and over and over mm. again, it's going to become normal to people. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. <laughs> right. But I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and then the second why is advertisement can give a voice to those outside the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And who are they? The LGBT people. Yeah. So we won't. Oh, so over 20 years ago, IKEA ran their first commercial that featured a gay couple. Over 20 years ago. Mm hmm Over 20 years ago, but. They received many backlash, hmm. even a bomb threat. Whoa! Oh, wow. At that time, wow. And you Pe guys, people are just <laughs> crazy, aren't they? Like, yeah. I'm gonna come blow up your store because you had this in the show. I mean, that's sad. I, I know. mean, why don't? We... No, no. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> like, you just blaspheme my God on uh, Lucifer. I'm gonna go bomb you now. Like, <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you if you negatively slammed a law in a commercial. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I guarantee you that yeah. company would, would, would probably have to shut its doors for a little while, uh, right. you know, so. Yeah, and, you know, other companies saw this IKEA, what happened to them. So instead of stopping making commercial that targeting gay people, they make it more subliminal. Mm -hmm. oh. They make it more subtle, like company like Subaru, they have their tagline, you know, get out, stay out. Mm -hmm. Or the other one, entirely comfortable with its orientation. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Hmm. You got to wonder if, you know, these things work together. It's not just about making money for the company. It's like, or it's different ways of making money for the company. So let's find what controversy we can stir it up. Or if people actually approach a company and say, hey, we need your help with this. Can we partner up? So you get sales on your oh. item and we actually get our message out as well. Yeah. Companies are interesting. They um, they have to be on everybody's side, exactly, yeah. right? Because <laughs> that's the customer. <laughs> so no matter what the issue is, they're always trying to move and shift and and all of that to be on everybody's side. It was just like um, there was a few years ago that on the Super Bowl there was a couple of commercials. One was for um, Budweiser, and the commercial was about immigration, and it took the story of. Um, the guy who founded Budweiser and showed how he was coming from Germany to America and all this and having a hard time. Wow. And this was just like two to three weeks after Trump was elected and passed the Muslim ban, uh, right? And here they had that commercial on the Super Bowl. They also aired same, um, same day, uh, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And they went through a whole bunch of faces weren't really advertising their product had you know wasn't about where you're going to stay next or anything it just different people different faces parts of their faces maybe half three quarters you know all of it and talking about how we all belong mm. you know we're all more similar than than we are different this kind of stuff and really interesting timing you know they're essentially saying we don't care what the president says we're on the side of our customer yeah, right. I was going to say, really, marketers, they're just worried about getting everybody's dollar no matter who it is. So sure. if the LGBT community says, you know, hey, Apple, uh, we'll pay you this much if you represent us. Well, that's just money to us. I mean, I just showed Keith an Apple commercial yesterday of like a whole pride parade that they gave everybody in the in the um, the parade a white Apple shirt, and wow. I don't remember what this tagline was. It said <laughs> hashtag proud, I think is what it was. Wow. And it was like Apple was putting its stamp on on the whole LGBT and, and saying proud of it, and it was just the big Apple logo. And on the isn't there like a Pride Month where all these companies switch out their regular oh, yeah. logo for the flag? It's mm, all about money. Yeah. I think yeah. they support, well, anyway, we won't go into that. Yeah, and yeah think but about they, them. they just created a whole bunch of free advertisement with that shirt on True. all those people, you know. And mm. Hallmark. 
you know, yeah. this situation with the commercial. You really think it was yeah. about the company's morality? No. Mm-hmm. They took the commercial down because one million moms boycotted them and they mm-hmm. have a lot of influence. So mm-hmm. like, okay, we'll take this down. But then the LGBT company came and they were like, oh, what are you doing? So then they had to like make the apology. And it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. trying to please everyone. But then, but then did it please everyone, you know, because mm-hmm. you either leave it up or take it down and one group's upset, one group's happy. So who are you pleasing? Which group is bigger? Which group? Yeah. Is bigger? yeah. I think once again, it still puts the, your name on people's lips. For sure. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it's like, no matter how you cut that cake, it's, they're no getting bad promotion out of it, right? <laughs> this, we're talking about it now. Yeah, People I know, go, right? like, look yeah. at an LED show about it. Yeah. Yeah, imagine, you know, 20 years ago, they got into trouble, and today we see it everywhere. No problem. And actually, I have this, the ad here. Well, you know, we went to Ikea, because uh, we thought it was time for a serious dining room table, and... We have slightly different tastes, I mean... Steve's more into country, it, it... Frightens me, but at the same time, I have compassion. <laughs> We've been together about three years. I met... Steve at my sister's... Wedding. wedding. I was really impressed with how... Just well-designed the Ikea... Furniture was. He's really into craftsmanship. Like, and these chairs are really sturdy. This table concluded a leaf. A leaf means... Commitment. Staying together, commitment. We've got another leaf waiting when we... Really start getting along. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think in, you know the fact that they're they're you know putting that out there as as this is normal is is going to influence people to you know ultimately think yeah oh yeah this is normal yeah and oh this is the Subaru ad look get out and stay out love, love conquers, conquers all, all. <laughs> I mean love conquers all is like their tagline right mm-hmm. yeah. having to do with cars or is it? <laughs> Right. Well. And, and and you wonder, like, you know how we're all, we like to support things that we share that same common belief. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe perhaps if you're not in the LGBTQ community, you might read this ad and be like, oh, cool, Love Conquers All, and that, you'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. But then there might be someone who's a part of that whole lifestyle and is like, oh, dude, I'm going to drive a Subaru now. You right. know, like they're, yes. they're supporting my people. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like, say, 50 years ago, if you saw a rainbow and it said love conquers all you're like oh this is like a beautiful christian message here you know like god's promise that he won't ever destroy the earth with a flood and that's yeah. love you know think and, again right yeah, it's like they just totally rebranded it yeah. right yeah it doesn't really have to do with car <laughs> Yeah, and they actually don't have to be subliminal anymore. Look at this movie, Onward. Mm -hmm. No longer do they have to be implicit with it or like, is implicit the right word? Like hidden, they don't have to hide it anymore. Ambiguous, yeah, or have the couple in the background or you're not really sure whether they're a couple or not. Maybe they could be friends or sisters. No, this person, this female just comes up and says, yeah, my partner this, my wife that, and they just keep it pushing as if it's just regular conversation. Yeah. So with that a little push, a subtle push every year, yeah. Now it becomes normal. Yeah. Yep. And so the third thing is that advertising can actually shape culture. Do you guys believe that? I do believe that. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And that's that's where like seriously watching that documentary art and copy um, really kind of gives you because it's actually the advertisers that came up with these slogans and worked on these productions. And they're the ones telling you, you know, like, yeah, it had this effect into the population. So no, I think you'd have to really do some mental gymnastics to, to say it doesn't affect you. Mm-hmm. And if right. it didn't, cultures, whole regions wouldn't be asking for bans on certain movies or alterations mm-hmm. being made. Right. Onward, that scene of um, the lesbian, um, Afri- we have a, a link to the article on our Facebook mm-hmm. page. Go check that out. But yeah, they banned that whole scene because of the fact that the character was out. Yeah. And then you have, um, was it Venom that's banned in like China and things uh, like that? So, yeah, if it, if it didn't affect culture, these people won't be taking these measures. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about movies that have like alternate endings and stuff. What was that one? Oh, it was a few well, years ago that like Chi- had a different ending for Japan than the U.S. Yeah. Pearl Harbor. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah, really? They didn't, that's right. They didn't, want, they didn't want them to like appear as like they were heartless and this and that. And, and wow. China actually has invested a lot in, in American media mm-hmm. and asked for you, you need to put um, you know, Chinese actors in there and you can't mm-hmm. say anything bad about China because mm-hmm. they know just having Chinese people in there and the representation 
is going to ultimately influence our population to to see in the, in mm -hmm. a positive light. What you want to put an anime plug in there? Um, hmm. if, if you just Google like China's um, influence in Hollywood, um, they're actually f behind a lot of the dollars being poured into the productions. Mm -hmm. And so when you when you're the executive producer, meaning you've paid for this production, you can have a lot of sway of like yep. you got to do this and this and this. Otherwise, I take right. my money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have this idea that it because our demand that this company makes more, but it's actually not. The mm. company make us have those demand <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> by mm. manipulating our feeling. What do we want? Creating this false need in ourselves. Like can, we can see that some modern ads tell us that we are, you know, we're not attractive enough. We are not smart enough. We're not cool enough. But if you use our product, your problem will be solved. Or even you're oppressed and this is how you should liberate yourself. Right. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I keep thinking of pseudology, man. This is a perfect show for that documentary. You definitely got to check it out. But help me remember how it went. But I remember there was some guy who made a quote saying we had to basically totally reprogram people's minds about buying things because it mm. used to be, I need this. I'm going to eat it today or whatever. And you buy it. But now there's now it's like you go in there and it's like, don't need it, can't afford it, and you walk out with it or whatever. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, the yeah. business the business insider. Adam Fraser. Yeah, he was basically saying that um, you appeal to people's emotions, and right. when you're actually appealing to their emotions, um, then people will make an impulse and, and do things that they normally wouldn't do. And so it's, it's all honed in, and it's specifically targeting your emotions. Like you said, making a hole in you that you're deficient, mm -hmm. and then they have this solution for your deficiency. And wow. it seems to be like two specific ones, either humor or like heart wrenching. Right. Mm -hmm. Those right. are really the. Well, the reason why they use humor, do, do you know, like like beer commercials and things, why are they so funny? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, some of them are hilarious, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody likes to laugh. Laughter feels good to us. Yes. And so mm -hmm. if they if they release those feel good chemicals in your brain and then quickly associate their pro product mm -hmm. with you, when you're laughing and then you see their brand, you go, oh, I like that. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like every time we see well, that brand, we're happy. Yeah, it makes me think of every time I see a comedian's face, I was, you know, you see Robin Williams, you think funny. Mm -hmm. He's not always funny all the time. That was part of what made him depressed was he right. felt like he had to be this jester, you know, and just make everybody laugh all the time when he was mm -hmm. just a normal person. But, right. And you can't take people seriously like when Jim Carrey, played 23 or whatever, it was like some people couldn't take them serious because mm -hmm. you're associating them with that laughter all the time. Mm -hmm. Advertisement can also impact values, our values like normalizing what is not actually good in our life, like the LGBT movement or, you know, being drunk, like mm. those beer commercial or smoke cigarette, yeah. like cigarette commercial. And I don't know if you remember in the old time, in the 40s, I think 50s, when the doctors, they promote cigarettes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You have, so you have more doctors smoke camels. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you, and you have a problem breathing. Here, smoke this. Like, <coughs> yeah. Yes. That really helped my, my throat right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just imagine at that time, people think by smoking, you will feel better. Maybe you're killing those germs that are infecting your getting yeah. that cold or <laughs> I, I remember when the cigarette companies actually um, had to take away their cartoon um, images because that was appealing to kids. Mm -hmm. Like they psychologically yeah. knew if they saw a camel that that they would be drawn to that camel and the US government forced them to you cannot have a, a camel as your Wow. as your logo anymore. I saw that thing oh. as a kid growing up. I thought he was cool. Like, right? Yeah, he's had like, sunglasses on. Leather, leather jacket. Like, What's up? Camel. Yeah, he's <laughs> really cool, I guess. Right, yeah, people thought that smoking, drinking, it's so cool, right. or being LGBT is so cool. Right. It's a and, trendy thing to do. Right, and everybody, people, they want to be different. Like we see in the first, the Apple commercial, you know, think differently, right. but they're actually doing the same thing. Yeah. They just <laughs> yeah. make you think you're doing different things. It's it's amazing because like with the doctors, you know, it's like the, everything is operating on this logical fallacy, right? Mm -hmm. If the doctor smokes a camel, well then how could it be bad for you, mm -hmm. right. right? It's like the celebrity endorsement. Yeah. You know, if you wear the Beats headphones like LeBron, then uh, you're gonna be like LeBron. Yeah, he's got all the money in the world. And he, You'll he, be able to jump that, that high and <laughs> yeah. dunk like LeBron. <laughs> I mean. 
<laughs> it's also they attach a sense of loyalty. Yeah. yeah. Like you got to prove yourself. Are you a LeBron fan? Oh, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. you can't do that. You can't buy this or associate with this if you're attached to something else. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I was guilty of that back in the day. Um, yeah, I was guilty of that. I remember I used to like Taylor Swift and they have this promotion with this ice cream, you know? Mm. If you buy this ice cream, you're going to get this <laughs> coat and you can get the some merch. So I actually did it. I oh, ate serious? a lot of ice cream. <laughs> That's that hilarious. Part. That's why I originally started liking Adidas because my favorite band at the time, Korn, wore it. And I switched uh, to Puma and I didn't fall for it. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And here. There's a comedian. Oh, it was like, yeah, like, um, you guys saw me drinking Coca-Cola. I drank Coca-Cola and promoted that, but then Pepsi came along and I drank for them. <laughs> Guess what? They will taste the same. I support both because they're paying me. Like it has uh, nothing yeah. to do with how, what I like. Yeah, right. yeah. Have you ever seen like um, like these American Idol type shows or X Factors or whatever? They all have like their cup on the table, yes. mm. right? Their cup on the table and that's the <laughs> endorsement by like Snapple or Coca-Cola or whatever. Yeah. We got a lot of branding on this on this <laughs> table here, you know? There's light bulbs everywhere. Just so you know, this show is brought to you by Little Light Studios. Yes. Don't forget to subscribe. That's right. <laughs>
And also, if we see in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mm, that right. shows Satan's counterfeit for everything. Yeah. He's okay. like, wait, train he up a child? I, I'll train up a child. He understands human nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And this is an interesting clip about how advertisement affecting children. So let's see. Here's why we need Wii U. Anyone can be like a superhero. Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. Hi, I'm Brett. Kids spend a lot of time on screens these days. And where there are screens, there are ads, and lots of them. In this video, you're gonna learn how advertising rewires kids' brains. Carl Sagan once said that the visions we offer our children shape the future. But these days, we're not treating kids like shapers of the future. We're treating them like shoppers of the future. How? By serving up ads everywhere. On TV, with product placements in the shows they watch, in apps, and even in video games. But kids don't always understand that advertising isn't designed to shape them into healthy, happy adults. It's designed to sell them more stuff. Some marketers even intentionally take advantage of young people's insecurities and their desire to fit in. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. And that's all because advertisers care about what's best for their bottom line, not what's best for kids. So what do children learn from this constant stream of advertising? Kids learn that buying more stuff leads to more happiness. In short, the more ads kids see, the more materialistic they become. That means that they're more likely to say they want to be rich and famous when they grow up, and that having lots of money is important. To learn more, I talked to this guy. Josh from Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood explains some of the consequences of these materialistic values. Research shows that kids who are more materialistic report lower levels of happiness, and that's not surprising given that materialism teaches us that stuff is what's important. In fact, it's actually our relationships and our life satisfaction that makes us happy. These materialistic kids also have lower academic performance, and it may be because they're more concerned with appearing successful than actually learning new skills and ideas. And when it comes to sharing and caring, well, they don't care about that either. When asked what they would do with the money if they won the lottery, kids who are more materialistic are less likely to say they would use that money to help others. Oh yeah, they're less likely to care about the environment too. The research shows that materialistic kids are less likely to recycle or turn off the lights when they leave a room. But advertising doesn't just affect kids' brains. It's harming their bodies too. About 98% of televised food ads that kids see are for unhealthy foods like soda, candy, and fast food. Studies have shown the more ads for unhealthy food that kids see, the more of this unhealthy food that they eat, raising their risk for obesity, diabetes, and other health complications. Black and Hispanic kids and teens are exposed to twice as much junk food marketing as their white peers. So yeah, advertising is really bad for children and for society at large. But here's the good news. People know that advertising to children is a problem. In one poll in 2014, 57% of respondents supported banning all advertising to children. You can be part of the solution too. Let's help kids understand what commercials and marketing are all about and teach them that more stuff doesn't bring more happiness. Just as kids learn negative lessons from advertising, they can unlearn it too. And that starts by asking questions. If you watch media with your children, that gives you the opportunity to have conversations when the advertisements come on. You can ask your children, what is the ad trying to do? Who made it? But it's also important to reduce children's screen time. Not only will that improve their academic performance, um, help with their relationships, and make them more physically healthy, but it will also reduce their exposure to advertising, which is trying to convince them of the big lie, that stuff that will make them happy. Groups like the Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood can help. So the Campaign for Commercial Free Childhood has all sorts of resources to help parents and caregivers reduce the amount of time that children spend with ad-supported screens. And finally, we advocate for policies that would protect children from marketing. Because if we want less materialistic kids, it's important that we change the rules of society so that all kids have a chance to grow up and be citizens first and consumers later. Thanks for watching. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe.
It's, or in the yeah. situation in a uh, supermarket where a kid wants something and their parents keep saying no, 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 not really explaining why, just saying no. Mm. So it's like building this thing up in the kid, like, man, as soon as I get some money or as soon as I'm on my own, I'm going to buy all of this stuff. <laughs> you know, you know right. what's interesting to me is, is we've analyzed movies and its impact upon your like actual life. But then here's something that where they're not even discussing like any sort of movies. They're literally like the more ads you're exposed to, you're going to have this like profound shift in your life. Mm -hmm. You're going to be less caring about other people, more materialistic. Wow, yeah. You're going to have mm -hmm. all these character traits mm -hmm. just from the advertisements. Not, not even forget the movies or the TV shows they're watching. <laughs> yeah. Just mm -hmm. that. And it's, advertisements usually are short. Yeah. It's not like movie, like one hour, two <laughs> hour. I just yep. like you know can be five second, ten yeah. second. Mm -hmm. Can change a whole mentality. Right. Mm -hmm. And also before we go to how they accomplish this purpose let us see as this four biggest company that dominates our lives google facebook amazon and apple mm -hmm. so this is an interesting article from scott galloway a professor of marketing at the new york university stern school of business so he said about google first that as a uh, homo sapiens we are always searching for answer Hmm. where we are searching for answer from, from somebody above. Hmm. Say. We okay. pray and we ask question. I mean, like, how is this going to be when I grow up? Or will my kid will be all right? Who might attack us? Hmm. And we treat Google like that. Hmm. Now we just ask no. Google mm -hmm. if my true. kid will be OK. Right. So we basically make Google as our God. God. Hmm. Mm -hmm. With a capital G. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah it, we make Google as our immediate, all-knowing oracle of answers from trivial to profound questions. Sure. And the second one is Facebook. We are all social beings, and Facebook makes sure we are. Okay, we are we are created to be social being, and Facebook makes sure to meet the needs of being loved and to love. Right. And do you, do you think it's exciting when you go to Facebook and then you see your old friends or somebody mm -hmm. give a like on your post yeah, right. or you like mm -hmm. somebody's post? Mm -hmm. More of the, like an, an illusion of love. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But somehow Facebook make it feels like you're connected mm -hmm. right, to yeah. people mm -hmm. and they can hook you in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the next one is Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon can... Uh, okay. So Amazon acts like our craving, our hunger. Mm. We always crave for more sugar, more sweet, more carbs. And Amazon make us, let me say this. Amazon make us, yeah. It's like they, they have everything from A to Z. Right. And so it's like, you're gonna get whatever you need from this company. That's mm. probably their MO. Yeah, they want us to crave more stuff that we don't even need right. cheap price but if you spend 10 extra dollars you get free shipping and hey right. look at this cool thing right. everybody that bought this also bought this don't right. you like it right <laughs> sure. right right and the last one is apple so he said that the second most powerful instinct after survival is procreation and as a sexual creature, we always want to signal how elegant, smart, mm -hmm. and creative we are. Interesting. Wow. And wow. Apple make us look like that. You know, if you own an Apple product, people see that we are, you know, we make money, right. we, we know how to live, we are uh, elegant and smart. That's what Apple does to us. And now they got like the watches. Yeah, yeah it's so true. When I see when I see people who have all Apple everything, even the oh. phone, and I and I just see that it has like multiple multiple cameras on the back <laughs> of their phone, then I'm like, I don't know how much you paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So this company, they're really smart. They are really mm -hmm. playing on our needs, Seriously. our main needs. And mm -hmm. then they surpass that into the wants, and then the wants overtake the needs, and mm -hmm. it's just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So let's see more how do they how do they accomplish this purpose. So this is some psychology of advertising. So basically 31% of advertisement are emotional contents. Mm -hmm. wow. It's not even rational. It's right. just emotional. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You really don't need that. No. But you want it. That's right. an emotion. 
Mm -hmm. Like when you see an ad of this car, looks cool, make you look famous or make you look like you're the coolest guy in town. You don't need it, but you want it. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. And you can't afford it, so they trap you in these small payments over the span of multiple years of your life. Right. And you're, it's usually tearing apart or you want a new one by the time before you even finish paying for it. Mm -hmm. Sad. It is. And also they use, you know, they use color and they use our empathy. They use our, okay. So they use our empathy, you know, with the emotional content and mm. they use our creativity too. How to, uh, by making the ad, I don't know how to. Oh, by appealing the ad to our feeling, mm. to make us feel happy when I when we see their brand. Mm. This is some example of the ad, the real beauty campaign. Dove, you know how they use <laughs> different types of girls mm -hmm. instead of just one girl. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Though. Yeah, that one is actually pretty cool. Mm. <laughs> and this one, the Coca Cola, you know, smile with the Coke. Yeah. They don't tell you that. The happiness factor. I remember seeing mm -hmm. like an animation commercial with Coca Cola that, you know, it just just looked like a fun place. Mm -hmm. And so when you when you watch the commercial, you were just like, wow, Coca Cola is just fun. You know, yeah. if you have it, you know, it's <laughs> like you have a good time, yep. right? If it doesn't tell you, you know, that it has a lot of sugar and other stuff that you don't need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also Google's uh, the Friends Forever campaign. It says the. The video depicts some surprising animal friendship and has attracted more than six million shares across Facebook, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because you know that company's paying attention to what everybody's watching, yeah. what everybody's like searching, and they're just going, oh wow, everybody's searching cute cat videos. Yeah. So if we put some cute little fuzzy animal in there, which we know everybody likes, mm -hmm. and then associate our brand with it. Exactly. Over. Right. I watch a lot of them because they're <laughs> I did you know, too. good for the family. It's not, <laughs> they're no, not pushing an agenda. It's like God's nature, nature's comedians. You right. Know, like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and how this advertisement actually get to our brain? And there is a there is a two routes on how do they get to our brain. The first one is the central route. It's the route that use facts and logic. It's just straight to us. You know, you need a car, mm -hmm. then you see an advertisement on a car on a TV, and you say, okay. I want that car, I'm gonna mm. go and buy that car. And usually that car uh, show you more of the the facts of the car, you know, the features. And the second one is the peripheral route. It doesn't really show you the features of the brand, but it just play with your emotion, with mm. the colors, with the music, with how attractive is the model in it, ignoring the content, facts, and logic. Of comedy, like uh, what was it, Anchorman or whatever? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't say anything about the car. Forty percent increase in sales. Wow! Simply mm -hmm. because of that. All right, it's in, it's interesting. And this one, this video, this video is is really show us how subliminal messaging in advertisement can really impact us. I invited two members of MBA, an advertising agency, to a secret location to propose an unusual task. Those who work in advertising are masters of persuasion. They subtly weave their images and slogans into our daily lives, knowing that we will register so much unconsciously. And then we walk into a supermarket and feel a sense of familiarity with a product we think we've never heard of. Millions of pounds a year are spent on it. It's brilliantly calculated and we all fall for it. So I thought I'd turn the tables on the advertising experts. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Tony, yes? Yes, that's fine. And Martin? Yeah. Hi, I'm Darren. Let me get down to explaining exactly what I want you to do. Imagine that I'm opening a chain of stores selling a product, something I have a particular interest in. Your task is to come up with a poster advertising that store. And that poster must include the company name, whatever you decide that may be. It must include a strap line, some sort of slogan, and some kind of logo as well, some kind of visual image. Sure. Now, the idea is you've only got half an hour to do this, so you've got to really work with your first instinct. So at the moment, you've got no idea what you're going to do, correct? Yeah. 
Excellent. I'm also going to give you this. I've had a few design ideas of my own. Okay. I want to leave this untouched. We'll come back to that later. All right? Are there any questions? What's the product? What's the product? Very good question. A mm. uh, passion of mine since I was a toddler. It's a chain of taxidermy stores. Ooh. Let me uh, pop the pussycat on the envelope so it remains untouched. You have half an hour, gentlemen. Okay. Good luck. Right, thanks. Right, let's go for it. Get stuffed is a start. Right. Animal hospital. Yeah, the yeah. ones who didn't make it. No, that's probably just stupid. Do wings. All creatures great and small. Quality that says like nice, positive type of yeah. animals. Animal heaven. Where animals go. Animal where heaven, that's good. Graveyard. Animal yeah. heaven's good. Animal good. heaven. Where the best animals go to. Loads of clouds with animals on them. Yeah. Gates, Harps, pearly gates, gates. Bear playing a harp. Yeah. Only the best Zoo. get in. Only the best get into it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where dead animals go <laughs> to live. Where the best. best. It's the best place for dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. Time up, gentlemen. Okay. I can't wait to see what you've done. Uh, come and show me. Okay. And Tony, before yeah. we do this, can you take the uh, envelope I gave you earlier? Okay. And can you please vouch for us here that no one's been anywhere near it, he's been under a dead cat, no one's touched it. That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. truth. Keep hold of it, come around here. Now, before we have a look <clears> at it, just tell me... What was it like? We started off thinking about the name, I thought that was the, we thought that was probably yeah. the best thing to the do. Yeah, starting point. Sure. And then take it from there, really, we banged out a lot of ones that were probably completely stupid and then got down to the ones that were slightly stupid mm -hmm. and then we kind of that went back yeah. and forth for a bit and then we kind of got something we liked and developed yeah. it. Can I have a look? Sure. sure. Is this it? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bear with a liar. So it's animal heaven, the best place for dead animals. And it's obviously, you'd see that it was stuffed. How did you come up with the name animal heaven? We had the idea of the pearly gates of heaven being a zoo gate. Zoo gates as the gates of heaven, that's yeah, interesting. I.e. Yeah. sort of all the animals that are dead are in a dead zoo, if you like, in heaven. And then we just kind of thought, well, it's kind of nice, but it's a bit twee. And we wanted to make it a bit funkier. And then we mm. thought a hard playing bear just answered the, <laughs> answered the brief. That's fantastic. I do want to show you my own ideas from beforehand. OK. Um, I don't want to touch. Would you open them for me? Sure. And the winner is... I think you'll find this interesting. OK. Sorry. All right. Not a million miles away. Let me put this up there. Hang on to that. It's yeah. it's a heart playing bear. Yeah. God. You've gone for these angel wings here. Were you thinking of angel wings or bird wings? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. they were kind of a combination. You do them a lot better than me. These, I, this was the same thing. I was thinking angel wings there. You've got animal heaven. I got creature heaven. Yeah. So you're, we're the best. You're a bit off there then. A bit off there. <laughs> oh, okay. Where the best dead animals go. God. Did you put blessed place for dead animals? Wow. Very similar. I had the idea of a zoo gate on there. It, it was hard to we leave out. We didn't want to overload it. Was, it. it was hard to leave out, but sure. it, just wasn't, it was just a bit too much. Can I see your other, um, the other one you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, put it, it down. Yeah, it's just before there. Is yeah. it very different? Well, well it's just, just the gates. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, please. Yeah, we're drawing quite similar. <laughs> Look at that. This, this was the image I was thinking. I've done it there in the background because this to me was the more striking image and interestingly you abandoned this for this one. This was yeah. obviously well, clear the first, in your mind. The first bear I drew looks exactly like that one, actually. It did, yeah. The oh, first bear you drew? Yeah, yeah. Shall I show yeah. you on the, on the notes? Show me, like that, show yeah. me, what have you got? Well, that, this is scary, really. But, um... Oh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. You've got the cloud, you've got the blue. If you knew the amount of effort we've gone into making this work, you'd be mm. absolutely flabbergasted. But for now, it's comforting to know that you're just as susceptible to subliminal persuasion as the rest of us. Thank you very much for <laughs> helping you. us out. Tony, Thank you. Martin. It's a pleasure. Take care. Thank Thanks. you very much indeed. Bye -bye. I think I'm quite cynical. When I saw the bear and I saw a cloud, first of all, from, you know, behind the paper, I thought, hang on, he's close here. And then when, when we saw the rest of it, I you know, couldn't believe it. I uh, immediately thought, oh, I'm gutted. Right. <laughs> uh, I could see that it was folded, and I just saw the bear's foot hanging over the cloud with a harp. Yeah. I just thought, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. You know, uh, it was yeah, how embarrassing. But now, now I think, oh, fantastic, yeah. you know, I'm over the moon. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're pleased for him, you know. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, he's. Yeah, as long as, you know, if he comes out of this looking good, then that's, you know, <laughs> that's always the main thing. <laughs> to see how we did it, watch their taxi journey again. I put a spell on you. Oh, 
So, I mean, that just shows you right there. You're you're influenced by just driving down the street. I yeah. mean, you see things on the street in your peripheral vision, mm -hmm. and that's impacting you. So, what happens when you're sitting there focusing on a TV, mm -hmm. and you're you're actually giving it your attention? It, it it's got to impact you that much and more. A, they put a lot of peripheral stuff in there, and you know the right. the the directors. They're like, put this thing in the background, and I want this here, and right. everything's strategically placed. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, aside from just what's on television, Duke University published a study that said you're exposed to between, I think it's like three and ten thousand brands per day. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. everything has a logo. And your brain yeah. is picking mm -hmm. all that up, mm -hmm. whether you're conscious mm -hmm. of it or not. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, what's the problem with all of this? Is there a problem with all of this? <laughs> I, I, I think I, I, I think the problem really lies is let's just say everybody had your best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they were putting ideas mm -hmm. out there like be a family man, stay at home, take care of your kids, have a good relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Think about what that would do to society. Right. But instead, really, the, the things that they're throwing mostly at us, cars are too expensive, your phone is too expensive, mm -hmm. clothes you don't really need, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like things that, that are, are not necessarily helping you, it's like digging you into um, yeah. slavery, financial slavery, right. really. Making you feel like you missed out if you don't buy those stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not every ad. There's some yeah. ads that, that are really trying to like change a, a, a cultural um, you know, thing, like, like racism. I don't think we should have racism in our world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're all yes. equal. We're all on the same plane. So there are some companies that will promote those kind of ideas. That's great. Use that platform to influence people. But if it's like, hey, drink Coca-Cola, which you can, you know, take the acid off of your battery with the stuff. Yeah, uh, sure that. It's not very good for you, you know? I think it all stems from deep-rooted selfishness. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it, there's no care for society per se, it's more of mm -hmm. money. Because if yeah. you remember Steve Jobs, I didn't see him as much of a flashy guy, right. you know, but his company is associated with things that are flashy, or even Coca-Cola, or movie stars who don't let their own kids watch TV. Yeah. So yeah, it's selfishness. Yeah. yeah, so I like this from this uh, psychology today. It says that the problem is that we allow advertisers to have access to our mental world. They have paid for the opportunity to slip information to us about what feels good. That information ultimately affects the way we make choices, whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. Like imagine how many subliminal messaging we get every day without even we're knowing. So we come to the conclusion. So advertisement does affect you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Whether you realize it or not, whether you want it or not, they affect you. Yeah, people are in denial that say it doesn't. For sure. And because we know that it affects us and things are going into our minds subconsciously, we should make even more attempts to control as much as we can yeah. and be mindful of what we do choose to put in front of our faces, okay. our minds. Yep. Right. And why does it affect us? Because advertisement trying to make us feel good in this world that is so busy right. and lonely. Sometimes we need that, uh, what do you call that? Stimulation. Or, no, when? Gratification. Validation. Validation, yeah. In this busy world, sometimes you need that validation mm -hmm. that you are worth it, you mm. are good. And we have this book here. Right here, it's called Finding Peace Within. Mm. This is a really nice book. It's a little devotional. If you want to feel peace, instead of looking for the ad mm. for validation <laughs> or right. media, this book can be good. Is this a giveaway? Yeah. yeah. How many do we got of these? I don't know. You have to count. Till them, supplies yeah. last, guys. Yeah. yeah. So how <laughs> we'll, we'll, how can know. they get it? Yeah. How can you get it? If you go to, how do they get it? So you can get the book by going to our website, littlelightstudios.tv. We'll put the link in the description below to make it easy for you. Okay. And also, the last thing is that the Bible tells us to, our, to use our uh, reasoning and intellectual ability. Mm -hmm. Like Isaiah 1.18 says that, you know, let us reason together. Yeah. In Proverbs, there is a lot of verses they say that we need to get wisdom and understanding because it's better than rubies. Mm -hmm. And in Romans 12, 
be not conformed to this world, but Amen. be transformed Transform. by <laughs> renewing of your mind. Yeah. Also so. being separate from the world, you know, what, mm. what's a good verse that talks about be separate? You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot that verse, mm -hmm. but I know there is. So any other comments? No, it's good. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> all right. So thank you guys for tuning in and let us all keep our mind on the Lord and See you next week. Bye, you guys. <laughs>